Hey, welcome to Breakfast All Day. Matt, Christy, Alonzo, Shaft. Uh, oh, wait, that's... No, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, want, I'm making Shaft in space. That. Shaft Gordon. <laughs> Shaft Gordon. Oh my God. So Don't this every one of us. So this is the 2019 <laughs> Shaft, not to be confused with the 2000 Shaft or the 1971 Shaft. Uh, you should call this movie Shafted. I feel bad for archivists who have to keep track of this sort of thing, but I feel bad for us because we saw Shaft. Shaft again. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Mm, oh, we already got <laughs> Son of Shaft in right. 2000 in the John Singleton film. It was Although in that movie, it was sorry to interrupt. In that movie, it was allegedly nephew of Shaft. Really? Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. Wait, There's Samuel L. Jackson supposed to be his nephew. He's supposed to be his nephew. Oh, oh right. Okay. Well, they've retconned it, so now yes. he's a son. Yes, they have. <laughs> uh, and uh, in turn, there is a Shaft grandson played by Jesse T. Usher, John Shaft Jr. And uh, he has been raised far, far away from Sam Jackson and his Michigas by uh, his mom, uh, Regina Hall. He had a shaftless up- upbringing. Go. Oh, Sorry. He, I got the gold mine. No, never mind. Anyway, so uh, he is now a data analyst for the FBI and a bit of a nerdlinger. Uh, but when his friend uh, dies in an overdose, it seems like it might be a homicide. He starts investigating and needs the help of Sam Jackson to crack the case. Uh, Sam Jackson, you know, kicks it old school, which in this movie means he basically blowhards like uh, Archie Bunker and uh, has a lot of things to say about millennials and their avocado toast and their coconut water and <laughs> their, you know, why aren't you more homophobic and misogynist like I am? I don't um, remember avocado toast coming up. No, but maybe. there is a coconut water there's joke. There is a coconut oh, water joke. And there's a, a whole thing. Where oh, that he, was a joke? <sighs> where he goes into his son's loft yes. and makes fun of the decor. Yes. yes. It's so, yeah. so this this is a comedy, as it turns out, <laughs> ha ha, from director Tim Story. <laughs> Somebody thought it was. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of irritating in a lot of ways. So here's my question, and this can also go to the doctoral thesis portion of our show, Mm -hmm. along with when do toys become sentient. Um, Can you make a black exploitation film today? And are they trying to do that here, or are they trying to split the difference between wacky mismatch buddy comedy and black exploitation film and in the middle is this incredibly awkward unfunny mishmash i think you could but they don't do it or they don't do it well here i think that's um, i think that's the, the way that they had all of the misogyny all of the homophobia yeah. there's a terrible trans joke out of nowhere it's needless it lands with yeah. a thud i think all of that is trying to be edgy like a black exploitation film like the idea that shaft but, was inappropriate and we're going to bring that to the modern let, day but let me put a pin in that yes. because i just watched the 1971 shaft again did you okay and 1971 shaft at one point goes into a bar where the gay bartender pats him on the ass mm-hmm. and shaft laughs and is like oh, the village right and it's like so 1971 shaft is far hipper and smarter and more progressive than 2000 sam jackson shaft who is presented here as the sort of curmudgeonly voice of you know the the pre-enlightened past fun fact so yeah fun fact about the original shaft and the novel the novels john shaft is white no kidding. Oh. No kidding. And oh, Richard wow. Roundtree cast was a decision that was made uh, unbeknownst to the original writer and partially changes this, like, Did, or partially, totally in large part, changes, changes right. But, well, like, they, uh, that movie, when it was first conceived, was like, oh, yeah, this will be about this. Oh, so, like, uh, how Beverly Hills Cop was supposed to star Sylvester Stallone. And, like, Jack Reacher is tall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But but you go back and to Adam the, Sandler's supposed to be funny. Oh, oh. Uh, you you go back to the original Shaft though, which was directed by Gordon Parks, right. who was a brilliant photographer and filmmaker, and so it looks great. It's got that immortal theme song. Nice callback to Shaft Gordon, by the way. Uh, there we go. Um, but it's like uh, yeah, but but seriously, that character, yes, he has a wife and a mistress, and he bangs every woman who encounters him. But you know, it dudes, was, y'all. What, yeah, it, it is not easy to be a sex machine to all the chicks. Um, <laughs> but that that movie feels so much smarter and just on top of things than this new one, which feels so hacky. 
the crime plot makes zero sense. Like they resolve it all in this conversation in the back of an Uber that you can barely follow because there's like wacky jokes with the woman. That's actually the the funniest part of the movie is her jokes and her like whoring herself into their conversation. That's the only like legit time I laughed. I don't think I laughed there. I didn't laugh there either. That's and, And Oh, by the way, the women in this movie are all either arm candy, nags or hostages or junkie prostitutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That too. That too. Except for, I mean, there's a nurse who is right. very helpful. No, she's a, she's a doctor sexist. Is she a doctor? She's a doctor. I thought she was a nurse. But she's a hostage. Oh, okay. Um, like the one time I laughed was where there's a there's a part where she's observing from a distance something bad is happening and she runs towards it and the camera doesn't move and then she runs back she goes no 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 that's that's a that's a basic bitch move Mm -hmm. but then like two minutes later she does run in and that's when she becomes a hostage um and then we should talk about what a waste of regina hall this is the brilliant and beautiful and awesome regina hall yeah all she does here she's a nag yep and and yet and yet she still loves him like she supposedly has a strong sense of self and she has raised the son on her own and she has taken Shaft Jr. away from Shaft to, for his betterment, whatever. Um, but then she is, you know, ostracized, or not ostracized, but criticized by him for making him too, quote unquote, soft. Uh-huh. And she still loves him. Like, she's still, like, oh, and, 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 she and the doctor are both turned on by oh, gunfights. Super turned on. So, like, all of a sudden she sees him in a manly way uh-huh. when he's got a gun and he's killing people in a restaurant. <laughs> exactly. And here's the thing. The defense for this movie is going to be like, oh, well, you know, yes, all the homophobic jokes and all the misogyny. It's because he's this dinosaur from another era, blah, blah, blah. But the movie comes down on his side. Like the movie never corrects him. The movie basically is saying, you know, either overtly or covertly, no, you're right. No, this kid is too soft and he needs to be more of a badass like you. The whole ending of the movie is basically like, why can't you be more like Sam Jackson, you know, who, you know, is this paragon of masculinity, even though he's also this like knuckle dragging brute when it comes to, you know, other people. Right. Sam Jackson does not change it all. All by the end, but None. the kid changes to be more like him, literally down to wearing the same jacket. Yeah, I, the, yeah. So, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, so, so, so yeah, he is the one to emulate here. It's not like they meet in the middle and learn from each other, which is also a totally facile notion, but they don't even do that. It's like no, the, right. kid, one the kid learns that okay, I don't like guns, but I'm really good with them, so I'm gonna keep using them oh. and I'm gonna <laughs> stick it to the man yeah, by leaving my job. The kid uh-huh. works for the FBI, uh-huh. which I assume means like he went through Quantico, uh-huh. he did the full Clarice Starling, <laughs> and yet the first time he is given a gun in this movie, he literally like, yeah, and like throws it out a window. And I'm like, I'm sorry, uh-huh. you work for the FBI. Like, fine, if you don't like guns, great. But you, you're not you gonna, know better. You're not going to touch it like it's radioactive and has cooties. And then the next time he's near a gun, he like well, kills everybody with one shot. Yes. You know, a million bullets come his way and he's just like, what, what's frustrating <laughs> is, especially in this particular script, is that there are sometimes moments where at least somebody saw a vision of competency. Um, you know, like the, the gun gets thrown out the window and Shaft yells at his son saying, there's, there's kids out there. Why would you do that? Like, that's a moment of like, okay, there's some sanity there, but then it completely abandons that. Um, this, this script is terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. And it's, it's in my head, like this is a movie for somebody who's never seen a movie in 10 years or a TV show, because what it really is, is a procession of gags. Like here's what old people do. Here's what young people do. And it made me realize like, Oh, John Singleton's shaft. The first time that Sam Jackson played it, that's a solid action movie, right? Christian Bale's in that. Mm-hmm. Jeffrey Wright puts into a really interesting performance as the Puerto Rican bad guy. Like I like that. That movie's pretty solid. This one is just even Sam Jackson looks bored in this. Also, I gotta call out like there's they make a joke about how Sam Jackson looks older than Richard Roundtree. So Richard Roundtree, is, well, Sam Jackson, seventy years old. Richard Roundtree, seventy six. Wow. Right, like there's a six-year age difference between them. And then how old is Jesse T. Usher? He's supposed to be, see, so he's a baby in 1989. Yeah, so he's supposed to be like 30. Oh, Jesse oh, T. They, Usher. They keep saying 25. It's like he gets he gets told, <laughs> I feel like he got, he and the um, um, ship, the- Alexander Ship. Alexander Ship mm-hmm. got told like, okay, in this comedy scene, we want you to act like high school actors. 
<laughs> like oh, it's like they they stepped off a high school theater terrible. production where they're the, the first, I am trying to act and I'm trying to say something serious. The, the first <laughs> the first act where he's supposed to be all nerdy, oh. he is overdoing the nerdy so much. It's like like he's like, it's like somebody trying about, to be Jerry Lewis. Right, or think something. about Urkel, but dial it down about a half a point. <laughs> exactly. Jesse like, T. Usher is 27. Oh, brother. and he's supposed to be Sam Jackson's son. son. He could be his grandson, but in 1989, he's a baby. Yeah. Anyway, uh, right. It's like there should be three. Generations Look, of shafts there's in between confusing. there. There's, there's a, there's a mosque in this movie that might or might not be affiliated with the crime, and I honestly don't even know if they were affiliated with the crime or not because this plot is so confusing and tossed off. And then they tried to have it both ways by like having the newscasters paint this as an Islamic, Islamophobic arrest that goes on there, but then the d- depiction of all the Muslims is pretty islamophobic I oh don't know. Th- this movie is so like uh uh reactionary that at one point uh they're talking about gangs and sam jackson's character says you know they're the cause of what 45 would call the opioid crisis and i'm like really not the family that owns the uh, oxycontin and the, like you know got it over prescribed like it just it, it, it was the weirdest thing for shaft to say there's also a really really weird lawrence fishburne joke Yes. Yeah. Just it, just it just takes you out of it completely. This, this whole thing is go see the 1971 when it really it holds right. up. You know what this is? It's like later Clint Eastwood movies. It's like The Mule. It's like Gran Torino in that mm. he's older and cantankerous and conservative and closed-minded and gosh darn it he'll just say anything and Isn't that ulti- charming? and ultimately the movies end up celebrating these people for that kind of mindset. Yeah. This is like that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm saying a one. This uh, is gonna be one of the worst movies of the year. Oh God, what did I say? You said two point five, two and a half, which I was clearly feeling generous. But yeah, this movie's a trash heap. Uh, I've seen far worse movies than this. Um, uh-huh. So four. You say four. Our number is a two point five. It's at thirty five percent on the tomato meter. Oof. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us at BeFast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And do visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFast All Day. The out link our, is below in yes, the description. Check out our TV recaps and uh, trailers and uh, other things that we are discussing. And if you've already joined, thank you for that. Yes, and, thank you. Uh, it helps pay for things like this little tiny snake. We have Yay! a snake now. All right. So we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, Thanks for bye. watching. Bye.